What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A05s. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of all the various cameras on your device. Now the first thing I want to do is go over all the cameras that we're actually getting here with the Samsung Galaxy A05s. And despite this being a more affordable smartphone, there's actually quite a few cameras. Now the first camera is the front-facing selfie camera, and that's 13 megapixels. And then on the back of the device, we're getting a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 2 megapixel macro camera for close-up images. And this phone does support portrait mode for both the rear and front cameras, which is certainly really nice if you're a big fan of that feature. Now, if you're looking for a quick and easy way to access the camera app itself, all you have to do is just double press on the power button, and then it takes you right over to that app. Then from there, you can start capturing photos or taking videos. And speaking of video, this device actually supports 1080p video for both the front and rear cameras, so just know that if you are looking forward to taking some great looking video clips with this device. Now despite the Galaxy A05s having a 50 megapixel main camera, the phone doesn't actually capture images at 50 megapixels by default. Instead, if you want to access this, you actually have to go up top here to where it says 3x4, and then you'll see an option for 3x4, 50 megapixels. Then with the 50 megapixel mode enabled, you can capture your image, and then it will take it in 50 megapixels. And the reason why that's not enabled by default is because 50 megapixel images do take up a lot more space on your device's storage, so most people don't necessarily need that feature, but at least it is there for when you do need it. Now also up top here, you can go back to the regular 3x4 mode, but also you can go to 9x16 or 16x9, which is great for taking video thumbnails. There's also 1x1, one one, so square, and then there's also full, which takes up the entire display of the device. Also up here, we have an option for different filters, so you can choose from a variety of different options. You can also adjust the filter strength as well, so I definitely recommend playing around with this and seeing what you prefer. Also up here is the timer, so we have options for 2 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, or no timer. There's also the ability to toggle the flash, so you can have no flash at any time, or flash on auto, or have the flash be always on. Now keep in mind, there is an option here where it says 2, so 1x is the standard photo mode, and then 2x zooms things into that level. But keep in mind that the 2x is just a digital zoom, so it's simply just cropping in. There's not actually a zoom lens here on the phone. There's even options as well for 4x, or even 10x. So again, all it's really doing is just cropping in. So in my opinion, you may as well take photos in the regular 1x mode, and then just simply crop in yourself after the fact. Now on this bottom slider here, you can see we have an option for portrait mode. So with portrait mode, you can get those nice blurred out backgrounds. You can also adjust the intensity level of that blur. So if you want more blur or less blur, you can make that choice. We can also head over to video mode, which I'll talk about a little bit more after. And then there's also the more tab here with other options such as panorama, night mode, macro mode, hyperlapse, slow motion, pro mode, and food. So I'm not going to go into all of these, but going into macro mode, you can use that macro camera and get really close up, and then you can capture things in really good detail. So that works really well. I'm definitely a big fan of that feature. Also in this more tab is pro mode, so you get different customizations for the ISO and white balance and different things like that. So definitely a nice option there for the more advanced mobile photographers. And then what's cool too is that if you want to take any of these modes and put them in this bottom slider here, you can simply press on this plus button, and then from there, you can pick up any of these and then drop them down below. Now for the main modes here, like video and photo, you cannot remove these at all, but for portrait mode, you can actually take that out if you want to. But once you kind of finish reconfiguring things to the way that you want them to be, you can then go to save, and then now you'll see that since I put macro mode down here, it's now in this bottom slider. Now if you're looking for a quick and easy way to access the selfie camera here on the device, all you have to do is either press right there or just swipe down on the viewfinder, and you can see now we're in selfie mode. So there's me right there. Also when you're taking selfies, you do have an option to take a group selfie. So if you press this button, it does crop things out a little bit so you can fit more people potentially in one image. And then if you want to take portrait selfies, just go over to portrait, 
And then you can see there's already some blur here, but if you want less blur, you can do that, or more blur, you can make that adjustment. Now you might've noticed my face is a little bit more smoothed out, and that's because by default, the beauty mode filter is enabled, and then you can adjust that level of smoothness. Now I prefer my photos to look a little bit more realistic, so I'm gonna turn that off, now it's on off, and then now I look the way that I actually look in real life. Now over here in video mode, there's a lot of different options as well. So flipping back to the rear camera, you can see that there's an option for the flash. So you can actually have the flash be on at all times when recording a video. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of like a flashlight connected to your phone. You can also adjust the aspect ratio. So you can do one by one videos if you want, instead of 16 by nine. You can also do full screen videos as well. You can also adjust the video quality. So the default is 1080p at 30 FPS, but you can do 1080p at 60, or if you wanna do 720p at 30, that's an option too. And then there are filters as well up here for video. So if you want video filters, those are there for you. And then we have similar video options for the front facing camera. So you can also do one by one or full videos. And then you can adjust to 60 FPS at 1080p for the front camera, 30 FPS at 1080p, or you can do 720p at 30. And then also you can do filters for the front facing camera in video mode as well. Now, in addition to everything I've shown you so far, there are even more settings and options here in this gear icon, which will take you over to the main camera settings. So you can see that by default, you can scan QR codes with the camera apps. So that's great. But there's also an option here for a swipe shutter button. So by default, if you swipe on the shutter button, it'll take a burst shot. So we'll try that right now. So I just took eight photos very quickly there. But also in addition to that, you can go here and create a GIF or GIF image instead. So now when I hold down, it's creating a GIF or GIF. So we'll pull that image up and see what it looks like. And you can see it is indeed moving. Now, if you do find yourself using up a lot of storage on the phone, you can actually enable high efficiency pictures or videos. So it is a different format there, which sometimes isn't super compatible with various computers. But if you do capture images in that format, it will take up a lot less space on the phone. There's also auto HDR, which is enabled by default. So that does kind of give you a better balance, especially if you're capturing images of areas that are brighter and darker at the same time. We can also go over to grid lines. And then now you can see we do have nine rectangles. So it does give us the rule of thirds, if that's something that you find to be useful when capturing images. Location tags is also another option. There's also shooting methods. So going here, there's a couple different things I wanna show you. So the first one is what you can do with the volume buttons. So by default, you can do volume up or volume down to capture a photo or a video. So basically the volume button works as a shutter button. But instead, if you do want the volume button to act as a zoom button, you can do that too. So volume up would zoom in and then volume down would zoom out. So that's pretty cool as well. You can also switch this just to control the system volume on the device. So that's another option. There's also floating shutter button. So we'll enable that. And then another one I'll show you here is show palm to capture a picture. But first starting off with the floating shutter button. With that enabled, we essentially have an additional shutter button right here. You can put it wherever you want it to be, but with that button, it basically acts as the regular shutter button. You can just choose the location of it. And then this next one is a little bit difficult to do with the camera in between me and the phone. But basically, if I hold up my palm, it will capture an image. So there we go, I just did that. And let's try that one more time. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you do find yourself changing a lot of different camera settings, you can actually head over to settings to keep to basically keep any of these settings so that every time you pull up the camera app, it doesn't just go back to the default mode. And then also we have an option for watermarks. So by enabling this, when you capture your images, it can show you the device name if you want. You can also edit that. You can also edit the time and date and the font as well. So that potentially could be useful to you. But well, this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A05s. I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully learned something new today. But most importantly, let me know if you have any questions at all about the phone. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.